Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thanks for joining me. I want to transition now to hardwood management without fire. A lot of properties can't bring in a prescribed fire management program or maybe you have a, a hardwood stand that you just wouldn't even want to burn but if you have a hardwood stand that has closed canopy you are going to have limited forage on the floor of that stand so if you have limited forage you have a nutritional bottleneck for your deer population so what we wanted to do is transition in this study and this is still Rainer's project look more localized and see if we could provide some localized nutrient pulses for supplemental nutrition and also for attraction of deer into a localized area without having to use fire. We know that stump sprouting is something that woody plants have evolved to do. If they get top killed, if they have an established root system, they will re-sprout. Pine trees don't re-sprout but hardwoods will re-sprout in most cases if you top kill them. And we know that from plant physiology research that the quality and amount of re-sprouting shoots will be dependent upon the root to shoot ratio. So if you cut down a, a six inch diameter tree, you're removing a lot of nutrients in above ground and so the, now all the plant's nutrients are in the root system and it is going to push those nutrients up into the new growth of the re-sprouting stump sprouts. And we also know from previous research that herbivores like deer are very well adapted to exploit these types of resources. And the re-sprouting in the prescribed fire treatments are also part of the reason deer go into those prescribed fire. You knock back the small woody vegetation, the, the inch in diameter and less, and those will re-sprout, and that's part of the attraction of a burn treatment. But again, now we're talking not burning, just creating mechanical stump sprouts. We wanted to look at three different, three different tree species, if you would, in a, with a range of preferences. Black gum is a highly preferred deer forage, Red maple is a moderately preferred deer forage, depending upon where you are. In the lower coastal plain, a red maple is going to be highly preferred because it's some of the better quality forage. In the upper coastal plain, northern, most of northern Mississippi and probably most places in the southeast, red maple is just moderately preferred. And then sweet gum is kind of the bottom of the barrel from the deer standpoint. It's a low preference species of woody plant that a deer biologist does not necessarily want to have on their property. That's why we removed the sweet gum in the earlier mid-rotation management scheme where we treated it with the imazapir. But we wanted to look at it here because we were curious if we could alter the preference levels by stimulating new stump sprout growth, which would have higher protein levels. So this is a picture of Rainer cutting some trees, making some stumps, and there's a picture of a, an adult doe nibbling on the stump sprouts. So we know deer respond to the stump sprouting. Let's look at what happened in terms of the quality of the forage. The crude protein content, now here we have three graphs or three histograms for each of the species. On the left axis is crude protein percent, and we have a control value, which is the leaves from the lower mid-story canopy that a deer could reach up and, and grab with their mouth, but that's not a good way for deer to eat. But year one is the year, the growing season following mechanical stump sprouting, which was done during the month of June. And then year two is the second growing season. Looking at black gum, we see that Crude protein content is significantly greater for black gum in both years one and two compared to the control leaves. And that makes sense because we have stimulated new growth. 
newer growth is always going to be greater quality than older growth. In red maple, same pattern. The control is much lower than the red maple stump sprouts during year one and year two. Sweet gum had a similar pattern also where the control is much lower than year one and year two. But let's look at the natural, the untreated, the control crude protein level. Black gum, I said, was the highly preferred, red maple moderately preferred, and sweet gum not preferred or low preference. And look at the crude protein levels. We know from other research, and this research supports it, that forage preferences are very much tied to the protein content of the plant. The more protein in it, typically the more preferred it will be to a deer because they can get more nutrient resources from it. But then the second part of the story here, or the main part, is that creating stump sprouts will increase the protein content of the sprouts. Mechanical treatment and very similar results from a phosphorus content. The control values well below phosphorus requirements, but the stump sprouts are very positively responding. They're putting a lot of phosphorus into the new leaf material. And now these leaves are meeting the phosphorus requirements for most of the life history stages that deer need during the summertime. In black gum, red maple, and sweet gum, for two years after the stump sprouting, the mechanical stump sprouting, we have significantly improved phosphorus and protein content in a very localized patch. It's just one tree at a time. Each tree will generally re-sprout the following couple of years, and so you can create these localized nutrient patches. I love looking at deer foraging, and this is some of the results of Rainer's work where he set up a trail camera on video format, and it shows deer, in this case, uh, adult bucks, foraging on black gum and red maple. And now here's a, a yearling buck foraging on sweet gum. And then we have an adult doe munching down on some good red maple stump sprouts. Look at, the, oh, look at all those leaves she just got off of that. Here's some black gum being eaten by another buck, different, a different buck. This figure shows the proportion of deer use for each of the three species of tree. And we see in the black gum, the proportion was significant. Around 40% of the black gum leaves were eaten both years. About 30% of the red maple stump sprout leaves were eaten during both years. And that's exactly what we hoped for and expected because earlier work by the MSU Deer Lab showed that these stump sprouts were high quality forage and if you want to see Marcus Lashley's video check out our YouTube channel MSU Deer Lab YouTube channel and look at mineral stumps so we knew they were going to be good we just didn't know how good we hadn't documented it quite as extensively as we have now. What was really surprising and pleasing to us was that we were able to take sweet gum, which is a very low quality forage. It's not the species that we want to see as deer biologists on any habitat that we're managing. However, if you have it, if you're stuck with it, the second year, deer actually used it pretty heavily. They used about 35% of the sweet gum stump sprouts. We think because we improved the nutritional quality of those sweet gum stump sprouts. So we showed mechanical stump sprouting produces high quality forage that is used regularly by deer, even a low preference forage like sweet gum. Rainer's work has some really significant management implications. You can use mechanical stump sprouting to create localized pulses of forage that can improve the forage quality within a closed canopy forest. And these, are, these could be a closed canopy hardwood forest, or if you have some significant mid-story 
hardwoods within an existing pine stand that is not going to be treated with a chemical or you could create stump sprouts within that pine stand and you're going to improve the forage quality because if you have closed canopy you're not going to have a lot of forage on the ground. You could potentially increase the use of non-preferred woody species like sweet gum which is just a remarkable improvement. You're taking leaves from the mid-story or possibly even an upper canopy if the tree is big enough and you're bringing the stump sprouts down to the ground level and that is going to induce a net gain in forage availability taking it from the mid or upper canopy putting it down on the ground within the reach of deer. These stump sprouts are a natural attractant. If you do the stump sprouting in midsummer you're going to have a natural attractant early in the fall hunting season particularly during bow season. And a really fun part about this is as any landowner or any hunter with permission from the landowner, you can get your hands on a chainsaw and you can become an active participant in habitat management on your property. Maybe burning is a little bit too outside the, the realm of feasibility for you for any number of reasons, but just about anybody can get a chainsaw and go out and improve the localized nutrient level available to your deer population. And again, it's not at the landscape level, at the property level. The stump sprouts are not producing a ton of forage, but they are producing a high quality forage that the deer are going to be attracted to because they need it. And if they happen to be attracted to it during the hunting season, so much better for you.